Screwball was five years old when she started school. There was some debate that morning whoever should take her. Fluttershy was worried that Discord would shock the young Colts and Phillies, but he saw that it was his duty as Screwball's father to walk her to her first day of school. The Pegasus finally gave in and allowed him to come. They slowly approached the red building. Screwball felt her stomach churn. What if some ponies don't like me? She said to her parents. Of course they'll like you, Discord replied playfully, twirling the propeller on her hat. Why wouldn't they? After all, who wouldn't like the most adorable filly of all of Equestria? Of course they'll do. do. But, you know, silence overfelled over the schoolyard as the foals stopped playing and their side of the Draconic Quest. Jet Screwball gestured to them. Because I'm different? And that's what makes you so adorable, her father exclaimed, ruffling her mane. Everything will be all right, honey, Fluttershy reassured the filly. Dinky will be there, so will Thunder and Lightning and Cinnamon Stick. After Applejack and Spike kite tied the knot a couple years ago, they adopted two foals, a brother and a sister from the Canterlot Orphanage. Doubting that their owns of their own foal would be possible, the Colt Cinnamon Stick was Screwball's age, and the Philly Cinnamon Roll was just a toddler and not old enough to attend school yet. Your teacher is also cheerly, Fluttershy continued. Remember her? Apple Bloom's mother? And oh, she also will be in your class too. Apple Bloom who was also in, turned around to be around, was also around Screwball's age when they had that moment often, but she knew that around Applejack's real niece, so she remembered cheerily very much the nice mare, who always smiled, and the idea of her being her teacher made Screwball feel a little better. Plus, all of her friends were going to be in her class. And don't worry about if any pony makes fun of you, Discord added. Just show them who's boss and turn them into an orange. Discord, Flesh Eyes shouted in a glare. That's no advice to give to our child. She looked back at the filly. If any pony cannot accept how special you are, that's their problem. As for your magic, don't get into too much trouble, and don't make any pony feel jealous. She deserves to show off her powers. The pickish just shot at him another warning glare before continuing. Promise me you'll behave, okay, honey? Screwball nodded. I'll be good, mommy. Good, she kissed her in the forehead. Now, I have you got everything? Your lunch? Check. Your notebook and pencils? Check. Don't forget your apple for the teacher. Turd. Discord exclaimed, snapping his fingers. An apple appeared in Screwball's hoof, and she gasped and chuckled and uh, as a worm popped out of it. Discord, Flush I warned. The Draconicus laughed and replaced the apple with a ripe, worm-free one. Just kidding, darling. Don't take everything seriously. Screwy? The family turned to see a wonky-eyed unicorn run towards them. Screwball then embraced at his, her friend happily. Isn't this exciting? Dinky cried, bouncing up and down. It's your first day of school, and we're going to have so much fun and make lots of new friends. The unicorn grew more excited as the free pegasi flew up into the road. Hey, Fluttershy, Rainbow Dash greeted. Looks like our kids are in the same class. Thunder, lightning. The twins landed at with a fud as Dinky tackled them both. Applejack chuckled as she appeared behind them. At her side was just a light brown colt with a black mane and autumn brown eyes. I could just see you're just excited as cinnamon stick here, the cowgirl said, patting her adoptive son on the back. Dinky looked up and blushed at the sight of cinnamon stick. Screwball noticed him returning to her blush. Hi, d -d -d Dinky, he stuttered. Dinky waved her hoof shyly. Hi. Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash and Applejack shared a knowing look. Every pony looked up as the school bell rang and cheerily emerged from the building. All right, kids, come inside. Fluttershy gave her daughter a slight shove. Go on, we'll pick you up at free. After giving another kiss, Screwball joined her friends as they raced up the steps. She stopped at the door. Oh, Miss Cheerly, she exclaimed, handing her an apple. This is for you. Why, thank you, Screwball, Cheerly said with a smile. Once the children were inside, Fluttershy approached the teacher with concern in her eyes. Oh, I should let you know, Screwball sort of takes after her father's in. Cheerly held up her hoof. I'm fully aware of Screwball's talents. Oh, because sometimes she can't control herself, and if she does cause trouble, you just let me worry about that. She's also a little bit sensitive about her eyes. She'll be treated, but like other pupil, I guarantee it. Don't fret, Fluttershy. She's in good hoops. Fluttershy smiled as the teacher as she closed her door and was still unsure. Discord then scooped up in her arms. She'll be fine, my dear. She assured her. After all, she's our daughter. That's what I'm afraid of, she muttered. Cheerily attempted to get their new students to settle down. All right, class. Now I know you're all excited and all, and I'll find your name on the desk. The schoolhouse had 12 desks in total. Screwball found hers on the first seat of the second row. She was thrilled to see that Dinky got to sit next to her. And Thunder and Lightning sat on the front row, while Cinnamon Stick got the back of the right corner. Screwball felt more comfortable being surrounded by her friends. 
Welcome and welcome to the new school year, my little ponies, Shirley announced. I'm your teacher, Miss Shirley. We are going to spend this morning getting to know one another. Everyone turn to every pony next to you and introduce yourselves. When Thunder Dash turned to the right, her she met with green eyes of an earth pony she never met before, and she had a yellow coat with freckles on her cheeks, and an orange tied mane with two pigtails, and he just sat motionless before Thunder spoke. Hey, hey, the filly returned in return, yelled at his hoof, Thunder Dash. Without breaking eye contact, she accepted his hoof. Oh, Apple Blossom. Oh, you're the teacher's pet, er, daughter, right? She nodded slowly, and Rainbow Dash is your mom? Uh-huh. They said nothing but stared at each other for a long while. Screwball's desk partner in right to her was a white unicorn with red and white and blue striped hair. She flinched at the sight of the earth pony's eyes. Screwball eagerly extended her hoof. Hi, I'm Screwball. The unicorn hesitantly looked her hoof. Uh, Aquafresh. Isn't this excited? Uh, yeah. Hey, are you? Cheerily tapped her ruler on the desk to get everybody's pension. Alright, now we're going to introduce ourselves to the class. State your name, please, and share something interesting about yourself. I'll go first an example. She cleared her hoof. My name is Cheerily, and I am happy and married to a currently teaching one a wonderful class. Screwball decided to play, pay close attention to the others as they introduced themselves, but only ones that she listed were her friends. I'm Lightning Dash, and I'm Thunder Dash, and we're going to be the Wonderbolts, just like our parents. The twins and hoof bump before Apple Bloom spoke. My name is Apple Blossom, and my mommy is up there. Thank you so much, much for the service. So much chatters around the students until cheerily voice silenced them. Yes, Apple Blossom is indeed my daughter, but I assure you she will be treated just as equally as the rest of you. Dinky then was excited for her introduction. I'm Dinky Doo, and I like muffins. Screwball giggled slightly and realized it was her turn. I'm Screwball, and my dad's the Lord of Chaos. The room became so quiet yet, and she could hear a pin drop. Screwball then shrank at and fought her that maybe she gloated, despite what her mother told her. But she did not mean to brag, but her teacher had asked something interesting. Well, that was the most interesting part about her. She did not understand why her pony was shocked, based on how the twins were looking at her and had a feeling that she had said something wrong. Why? It's not like they had did not know. It was that she had grown with a second head. Hey, did I say something wrong? She asked the teacher. Cheerily, of course, shook her head. No, Screwball, you said nothing wrong. Let's continue. I'm Aqua Fresh. The unicorn stood beside her and said, I, rather shaking, and my mom's a dentist. Screwball did not hear the rest of the introductions, nor pay any attention as Cheerly began the lesson. She was too busy listening to whispers from two cults behind her. She's the one my sister told me about. Her daddy is supposed to be a big hairy monster. Yeah, I think I saw him this morning. My sister told me she's much as a freak as he, he is. Yeah, and I mean, look at that hat she's wearing. She had protectively held onto her treasure hat in front of her, Aunt Pinkie P Pinky. And what's up with her eyes? Is she blind or something? Her head then wrenched around her neck and faced the colts. I'm not blind! Screwball! She faced cheerily, realizing that she said that out loud. Howd. Howd. What's going on? The teacher asked curiously. Are you paying attention? Sorry, Miss Cheerly, she pleaded. They're just saying mean things about me. Tattletale, whispered the boy behind her. Is that true, Gold Digger? The... The... The colts then had it with the golden fur in the back. She said, No, Miss Cheerley, we're just talking about her eyes. The teacher squinted at him. Your sister was a pupil of mine, so I expect you to be familiar with the rules of the class. Every pony, from now will be on, there will be no more talking during the lesson. Screwball glanced over at Apple Bloom Blossom and tried to copy her pose by sitting up straight and folding her hooves on the desk. She could not get in any trouble on her first day of school. Mom would get upset, of course. She flinched a bit as a prick on the back of her neck. She then glanced around and shrugged it off, assuming it to be a fly, but then she felt it again, and it did not hurt, really, but she found it quite annoying. Then something popped onto her desk, a rubber band, and she looked at the golden colt out of the corner of the eye, and he and his friend were snickering with pleasure. She fought over what her dad said about numerous ties, that if any pony makes fun of him, show him who's boss. She did not want to disappoint her mother, but these were the colts that she needed to be taught a lesson, so she subsided for her revenge and for Cheerly, of course, knew her powers. Screwball glanced over at the rubber band and then had missed and remembered Aunt Pinky showing her something called Cat's Cradle. She then smiled motiviously as he, she made a rubber band paper appear here between Gold Digger's legs, copied to a trick, and of course she was successful, and she tried it on the Evercold. Then the bell rang for recess and the two boys tripped out of their seats. What the? Gold Digger uttered, looking at his tied legs. Thunder and Lightning Dash got out of the psych and gave Screwball a questioning glare, 
and she nodded with a devilish grin. Nice, Lightning muttered, giving her the hoof bump. Now let's get out of here before the teacher notices, Thunder whispered. The Phillies all agreed and they rushed out to the playground. For the first five minutes of recess, Screwball and Dinky spun a rope around the twins while they were complimentally peated on over who could jump the longest. Nine, ten, Dinky counted. Uh, what comes after ten? Eleven, Screwball countered. Twelve, thirteen. Hey guys, watch this. She let go of the rope and kept spinning as if some pony was looking around. Dinky gasped and released her end as well. Awesome, the twins exclaimed. That's the coolest thing ever. You're the coolest friend I've seen. Lightning declared, and you're the sneakiest. Sneakiest one ever, Thunder added. Who wants to play tag? The twins stopped jumping and entangling themselves in the rope. I do, I do, Dinky hopped excitedly. Then the very last all their friends with enthusiasm, who jumped over to the other students as they, they gathered around. Screwball smiled and faded as she saw that Gold Digger was the same one that had the announcement. His blue eyes were met and gave each other a mutual glare. Sorry, he said. The game's just for ponies only. But I am a pony. Of course, Screwball insisted. No, you're not. You're only half pony. My big sister Diamond Tiara told me so. Many of the fools gasped, not believing there was such a thing as a half pony. You saw that monster? Gold Digger asked them. That's her daddy. They shrieked in horror. My big sis and your daddy took over Equestria three times, and he's the baddest of ones of all. He's evil. Screwball had no idea what he was talking about, so she stomped her hoof in anger. Daddy's not evil. He is evil, and that means you're evil too. Look at her eyes. Hey, the twins cried out, standing in front of their friend. Leave her alone, Thunder Dash cried. What's wrong with you? Oh, Lightning Dash demanded. What's wrong with me? Gold Digger replied. What's wrong with her? She's got funny eyes and her dopey friend over there. Screwball gasped and looked at Dinky, who was at the verge of tears, picking up one thing that was but no pony made fun of Dinky. No pony. She may look different, but she was not a dope. Gold Digger made Screwball so mad that she wished the sky came crashing down on him. Some of the students looked up at the shadows covered them, and she screamed when they saw the piano hurtling towards Gold Digger, and they all scattered out of the way. Screwball managed to grab Dinky before the instrument hit the ground, smashing into pieces. As soon as they heard with the crash, Cheerilee rushed down and gasped at the sight of the broken piano and wondered how it got into the schoolyard. Then she looked over at Screwball, who had a guilty look on her face. Fluttershy knew something was off when her daughter did not come out of the building immediately. Dinky explained that Cheerilee kept Screwball after class, expecting the worst. Fluttershy entered the classroom, and Cheerilee was sitting expectantly on her desk. Apple Blossom was sitting down on her own, and Screwball was on a stool of the corner. And of course, as soon as she saw her mother, they all faced them in the wall in shame. I appreciate you coming here, Fluttershy, the teacher said bluntly. What's going on, the Pegasus inquired. Apple Blossom, would you wait outside, please? The filly said nothing and obeyed her, her mother. Have a seat, Fluttershy. Fluttershy pulled up a chair and sat across from Cheerly. It appears there was a little accident today. The Pegasus then glanced over at Screwball. What happened? Well, how do I put this? A piano dropped from the sky. Fluttershy's eyes widened in shock. A piano? Yes. I checked that there was no moving cart in the sky at the moment. You think Screwball? Cheerilee looked over the filly at the corner. Well, Screwball? She turned her head slowly and winced at the expression on her faces. I didn't mean to, he, she insisted. They were making fun of me and Dinky and I didn't want it to happen, but they made me so mad. Honey, you promised you'd behave, Fluttershy shouted, almost too loudly. They called Daddy evil. Her mother's angry eyes of expression turned that one into fear and faced the teacher again. I assure you it won't happen again. See that it doesn't, Charlie said coldly. You may go home now, Screwball. The filly slid off the stool and smiled nervously at her mother. The glare that received in return caused her to hang her head. We are going to talk to your father about this. A piano, Discord said looking up from his bowl of paper and went over to this Screwball. A bit dramatic, don't you think? A pile of bricks sort of could have suffocated. Discord! Flesh, I gasped. Well, who would serve the brat for picking on my daughter? They were sitting at the table, bull, and Flesh, I just explained the events that happened at school. I also tied his hooves to a cat's cradle, Screwball admitted, picking at her peas. Her father gulped. You did what? Did you. What did you use? String a rubber band. A rubber band. He threw at me with the bands first, giving him a taste of his own medicine, huh? He clapped his hands. Pure genius. That's what it is. Fleshy was appalled. Don't encourage her. She could have hurt some pony. Those runs should have thought about that before they mocked our beautiful daughter. But he said you were evil, Screwball stated. 
They're both turned with white eyes. Who told you that? Discord demanded. The gold digger did it, she replied. He said that you were evil, and I was evil too. Sweetheart, her mother said, stroking her mane tenderly. You're not evil, and neither is your father. Screwball looked over at her father with the eyes. He said you took over Equestria. Discord then shrunk guilty into his seat. Um, uh, yes, I took over Equestria once or twice, but that was a long time ago. You see, honey, Flourish I explained, your father was evil long before he met. It seems like a thousand years ago, the Draconic Quest reminded. Actually, it was. I was overstressed because of my appearance. Well, you could say I went crazy, like you did today with the piano. But the princess has punished me while during turning me into stone thousand years. When I was released, I met your mother, and we didn't start off on the friendliest of terms. But she was one of the barriers of the elements of harmony that the only things that could defeat me, she was kindness. And your Aunt Twilight was magic, Rainbow was loyalty, Pinky was laughter, Applejack was honesty, and Rarity was generosity. I came up with a plan to dispose of the elements of harmony, but when that didn't work out, I tried something else, you see. He did not want to go into detail of what happened. He did not want his daughter to think of him as a monster. Thankfully, Fluttershy summed it up gently. He said he would leave Equestria in exchange for a willing bride. He sighed in relief. Yes, I have grown rather lonely over the years, but your mother was the only one who accepted the deal. Screwball's eyes widened. You were forced to marry Daddy? Flesh hesitated. At first, yes, but then I got to know your father and that's when we fell in love. Discord finished, placing his hands on her shoulders. Your mother is an amazing mare. Remember that. And she was the only one who would truly accept me back then. I then realized that I could not have Equestria at the same time and could not live without her, so he, she took his paw. We got married. He grinned at her and kissed her lightly on the lips, making Screwball gag. Yes, she bought out the good and me and I don't do evil anymore. So you never mind what that gold digger person said. Well, he made fun of Dinky too, Screwball reminded them. And that was very wrong of him. But if that piano had hit him, what could have made you any better? She hung her head. No? Good. So Daddy's not the baddest of bad guys? Discord chuckled. No, well, once upon a time he trailed off as Fluttershy poked him in the ribs. I mean, no, I found something better than chaos. He then remembered and smiled at his wife and she returned his smile. Remember this, honey, Fluttershy said. When it comes to love and appearances are significant. Indeed, Discord agreed. And it's the most powerful form of chaos there is.